Hi everybody, Mr. Burke here, and today we are going to finish The Baby Zoo by Bruce McMillan. Remember, this is photo illustrated, so all of the pictures you see are real pictures of each of these animals, and I think they're so cute so far, but we have so many great baby animals to learn about still. So, last we left off was on the baby beaver called a kit, right? And today, we're going to see a baby bird often called a chick, especially when it's a fowl, right? Like a chicken, a baby chicken is called a chick. And a chicken is known as a fowl bird, F-O-W-L. But this bird in our picture here is the East Indian red jungle fowl. And that's an East Indian red jungle fowl chick. East Indian red jungle fowl are the ancestors to the domestic fowl. They live in large flocks of up to 50 birds. When the chicks are only eight days old, they can fly from branch to branch, and at 10 days old, are able to fly a short distance with some degree of skill. East Indian red jungle fowl chicks primarily eat insects. As they grow into adults, they also eat grains, fruits, and vegetables. They are native to the dry brush and tropical forests of East India. Next up, like on the back of our book, we already learned that a baby wallaroo is called a joey. But look how adorable that joey is. And a wallaroo looks really similar to a kangaroo, doesn't it? They're just a little bit smaller. And this is the New South Wales wallaroo. New South Wales wallaroos are medium-sized members of the kangaroo family. All kangaroos are marsupials, mammals with pouches. The joey lives in its mother's pouch. A New South Wales wallaroo joey holds onto its mother's nipple, which is located inside the pouch, and doesn't let go until it's a little over two months old. It peeks out from its mother's pouch when it's about five months old, and first ventures out when it's a little more than six months old. But it doesn't leave its mother's pouch permanently until it's about eight months old. Wallaroos are nocturnal, feeding from dusk to dawn and resting during the day. New South Wales wallaroos can go without food or water for up to two or three months, longer than most other members of the kangaroo family. New South Wales wallaroos eat grasses, leaves, and herbs. They live on the mountains, on rough terrain, and in caves located in eastern Australia. You may have heard that a baby goat is called a kid, but also baby dikers are called kids, and that's a diker right there, specifically the yellow-backed diker. Yellow-backed dikers are called bush goats by the natives of Africa. Dikers are small-sized members of the antelope family, but the yellow-backed diker is the largest of the dikers. Mothers give birth to a single kid, and the newborn stays hidden in vegetation for weeks. At about a month, kids develop a yellow patch of fur on their lower back, and by 10 months, the distinctive back of yellow fur is fully developed. The kids, both male and female, eventually grow a pair of short single spike horns, no longer than their ears. Adults are shy and only occasionally venture into clearings. When startled, they dive into dense vegetation. That's how they got their name. Diker means diving buck. Yellow-backed dikers feed on grasses, leaves, fruit, and sometimes insects and small animals such as birds. They live in the dense tropical forests of Central and West Africa. Now, just like baby bears were called cubs, here's a cat that has a cub instead of a kitten for a baby. That's right, North Chinese leopard babies are called cubs instead of kittens. North Chinese leopard cubs are born fully furred with their eyes closed. Newborns usually weigh between 15 and 20 ounces. The cubs are kept hidden until they start to follow their mother when they're almost two months old. The mother cares for her cubs until they're about a year and a half old. North Chinese leopards are nocturnal and seldom seen by people. 
During the day, they hide in lairs, and during the night, they roam up to 30 miles. These long-haired, cold-climate leopards are good climbers. They ambush their prey, or stalk it until the prey is close, then quickly rush it. North Chinese leopards eat small deer, wild goats, wild pigs, birds, and other small mammals. They are an endangered species, and it's possible that they could soon become extinct. North Chinese leopards come from northern China, where they could live in forests, thickets, and alpine meadows. There are other cats that have cubs too, right? Lions and tigers are both cats, and their babies are called cubs too. Now we have another pup, like the sea lions, but this time, it's a black-tailed prairie dog. I think he's pretty cute. Black-tailed prairie dogs are members of the squirrel family. They build extensive burrows with an elevated entrance to keep out water. Pups are born and raised in the burrows and don't appear above ground until they're five or six weeks old. They stop nursing by the time they're seven weeks old. These highly social rodents live in groups called towns and form smaller groups within the towns called wards. These wards have even smaller groups of about eight animals called coteries. They kiss, nuzzle, groom, and play with each other. Adults defend their territory with a combined motion and call, a jump yip. They then seek refuge in their burrows. Black-tailed prairie dogs maintain a rotating pasture and feed on herbs and grasses. They live on grassy prairies from south central Canada to north central Mexico. There they are. Now, just like the camel calf and how a baby cow is called a calf, baby giraffes are also called calves. This is the Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffe calves fall five feet to the ground from their tall mother when they're born. The mother immediately licks her stunned newborn. It can weigh from 100 to 150 pounds, and the six-foot-tall calf can first stand 20 minutes after being born. It stays with its mother for 15 to 18 months. A calf follows its mother everywhere, mimicking its mother's behavior. Giraffes have the same number of neck vertebrae, neck bones, as humans but the vertebrae are elongated, which makes giraffes the tallest terrestrial animal. Giraffes also have knobby horns that are like no other mammals. Their name comes from the Arab word zirafa, which means the one that walks very fast. They can run 35 miles per hour. Maasai giraffes eat leaves and buds from trees and bushes. They live on the tree-dotted African plains and open forests of southern Kenya and Tanzania. You see the little knobby horns that they were talking about? Unlike any other mammal. Next up, we have another lamb, but this time it's not for a sheep, even the bighorn variety. This time it's for a European mouflon. That's the adorable European mouflon right there. European mouflon lambs are born in the spring. Multiple births are common. As they mature, both males and females grow horns. Adult males weigh about 70 pounds and are larger than the females. European mouflon are the smallest of the wild sheep, so they are a type of sheep. It just doesn't sound like it with their name mouflon. They are the ancestors of our domestic sheep, which were domesticated in the eastern Mediterranean about 10,000 years ago. They have a woolly winter underfur that stays well hidden by a coarse, heavy coat. European mouflon eat grasses, herbs, and leaves. They live on the rocky mountains and grassy mountain meadows located on the Mediterranean islands of Sardinia, Corsica, and Cyprus. Now, just like a human baby is called a baby, the spider monkey young is also called a baby. And that makes sense because there's a lot of research out there that says that humans are very similar to monkeys, right? Spider monkey mothers usually give birth to one baby, then wait three years before giving birth to another. Babies spend much of their time playing, exploring, and wrestling with each other. 
Spider monkeys have strong arms, long legs, and long prehensile tails, which means tails that can grasp. <clears throat> they can hang by their hands, feet, or tails. They can even pick up things with their tails. Spider monkeys live in treetops, can easily swing through the forest, and are able to jump over 30 feet from tree to tree. They often groom each other. Spider monkeys mostly eat fruit, but they also eat nuts, seeds, buds, flowers, leaves, insects, and eggs. They live in the tops of trees located in tropical forests from Mexico south through Central America to Colombia. And I just think he's so cute. And that was our last baby that has a picture in our book. But it does have this page here that tells us a whole bunch of baby names. And I'm just going to run through that really quick. So a baby refers to the young of a chimpanzee, baboon, gibbon, gorilla, human, and monkey. So it's a lot of times in primates, like all those different types of monkeys, right? A calf refers to an antelope, a buffalo, a camel, a domestic cow, a baby dolphin, a baby elephant, a baby elk, giraffe, a baby hippopotamus, okapi, moose, rhinoceros, takin, walrus, whale, and yak. There are a lot of babies that are called calves. Baby caterpillars, or baby butterflies and moths are called caterpillars. The babies of grouse, partridges, and quail are called cheepers, those three different types of birds. The word chick refers to baby of domestic fowl, like most birds, like chickens, right? The word colt is a baby male horse, sometimes also called a foal. The word cub refers to baby brown bears, black bears, grizzly bears, panda bears, polar bears, spectacled bears, and sun bears, and it also refers to cheetahs, cougars, jaguars, leopards, lions, panthers, and tigers. Fox sometimes are called cubs, but they're also called kits or pups, and baby sharks are called cubs. There's a whole bunch more. A cygnet is a baby swan, a duckling is a baby duck, an eaglet is a baby eagle, an elver is a baby eel, an is is a baby hawk, a fawn is for baby deer and baby gazelle, a filly is a young female horse, but also called a foal, right? A fingerling is a baby fish, sometimes called a fry. A fledgling is for chicks who are beginning to grow their flight feathers. Let's see what else. A gosling is a baby goose. A hatchling is a baby turtle. A joey is a baby kangaroo, koala, wallaby, and wallaroo. A kid is for a baby goat, ibex, and antelope. A kit is for a baby beaver and sometimes a baby fox, baby raccoons, baby skunks, and baby rabbits sometimes. Bunny is an informal name for rabbit, actually. Kitten is used for domestic cats, fishing cats, lynx, ocelots, and servals. Lamb is used for domestic sheep and mouflon babies. Larva is an insect baby. Leveret is a baby hare. A nymph is a baby dragonfly, a piglet is a baby boar, baby domestic pig, and baby warthog, a polywog is a baby frog, also called a tadpole, and a poult is a baby turkey, a pup is a baby coyote, dingo, domestic dog, fox, jackal, otter, prairie dog, sea lion, seal, squirrel, and wolf, a shoat is a baby domestic pig, also called a piglet, a spiderling is a baby spider, squab is a baby pigeon, and a whelp is another name for a baby domestic dog, a baby dingo, a baby jackal, and a baby wolf. They're also called pups, right? So there's a whole bunch of baby names, but we got to see so many cool pictures of them in The Baby Zoo by Bruce McMillan. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for listening.